Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 2nd of September. It's a feria in the 22nd week of the church's year. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Continuing the letter of Paul to the Colossians, first chapter. Ever since the day we heard about you, we've never failed to pray for you, and what we ask God is that through perfect wisdom and spiritual understanding, you should reach the fullest knowledge of his will. So you will be able to lead the kind of life which the Lord expects of you, a life acceptable to him in all its aspects, showing the results in all the good actions you do and increasing your knowledge of the Lord, of God. You will have in you the strength, based on his own glorious power, never to give in, but to bear anything joyfully, thanking the Father who has made it possible for you to join the saints and with them to inherit the light. Because that is what he has done. He has taken us out of the power of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of the Son which he loves, and in him we gain our freedom, the forgiveness of our sins. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is from Luke, chapter 5. Jesus was standing one day by the lake of Gennesaret, with the crowds pressing round him, listening to the Word of God, when he caught sight of two boats close to the bank. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, it was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, We worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear. So they signalled to their companions in the other boat to come and help them, and when these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on it is men you will catch. Then bringing the boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians, there are perhaps two themes running through. One is knowledge and the other is light. It talks about the Colossians receiving through their baptism full knowledge of Jesus, or well, they're on the journey to the full knowledge. It's a special word that uh, Paul uses for this uh, type of knowledge, epigenosis, um, more than just ordinary knowledge. And he, in a sense, ties it to spiritual discernment, that the more knowledge one has of Jesus, the more one is clear about what sort of life one should follow to be close to him, and at the same time, we receive, through this knowledge, help to actually do and behave in a way that is appropriate as a follower of Jesus. The other theme following through the readings is that of light and darkness, that through baptism we receive light and it dispels darkness, it's related to knowledge, but it's also having a sense of vision, a sense of seeing things as they are. One of the early names for the sacrament of baptism is the sacrament of enlightenment that somehow one was given the light of baptism. The gospel is another variation of how the first disciples were called. Um, the story of the boat being overloaded with fish when Jesus said leave out your nets is very reminiscent of the ending of John. But here the two boats struggle, they called John, John's boat uh, to come and help. And the interesting thing is that it's something that happens all through Christian spirituality. The closer one gets to God and closer one is 
approaches Jesus, the greater the sense of being a sinful person one has, but that equally one shouldn't be afraid. The sense of being a sinner, Paul, uh, not Paul, and Luke brings it up very well when Peter says, leave me Lord, I'm a sinful man, when he sees the great number of fish they've caught and realises just who Jesus is. It's appropriate that we have the sense of our weakness, our sinfulness, because the closer we are to God, the more we realise what a creature we are, a small cog in a huge divine wheel. And equally, God's delight in what you might call the small cogs. It's the heart of the Magnificat um, when Mary celebrates his being the lowly one. God has specially granted me graces. And it's true for us too. The, this very real sense of being unworthy when we come closer to Jesus is also the vehicle for receiving greater graces we need to be closer to him. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, hear us. Blessed be our God and Father. He hears the prayers of his children. Lord, hear us. We thank you, Father, for sending us your Son. Let us keep him before our eyes throughout this day. Lord, hear us. Make wisdom our guide. Help us walk in the newness of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, give us your strength in our weakness. When we meet problems, give us courage to face them. Lord, hear us. Direct our thoughts, our words, our actions today, so that we may know and do your will. Lord, hear us. The Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, true light and creator of light, grant that faithfully pondering on all that is holy, we may ever live in the splendour of your presence. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the best. Have a good day.